So we are now recording. Thank you and welcome to the Akashic Trans Work free webinar. We're so excited to have you here with us. My name is Nathan and with us is also Astara, my partner. And together we've created, we've channeled in an amazing, powerful new modality that is a very healing, very powerful, very transformative process. And at the cornerstone of Akashic Trans Work is how to manage our different states of awareness and how to cultivate our astral boundaries. So I'm going to go ahead and take you through the process that we use to induce trance states and to cultivate these boundaries. So essentially at Akashi Trance Work again, we explore consciousness. And we've come to understand that consciousness grows in a predictable, repeatable cycle. And we call this the A-R-E cycle. This comes from the idea of Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. We are all because we are all together. We are all one. I only exist because you perceive me as separate. You only exist because I perceive you as separate. It's true with the chair that you're sitting on or the person in the next room, if there is somebody. We're all one because we exist by association with one another. And as we have come to understand how Ubuntu works, how oneness works, we've come to understand we are, we all are, we activate our higher awareness, we release the things that no longer serve us and making space in this way allows us to expand into ourselves, to expand into greater understanding of the universe, to make space, to really use our gifts, to really understand ourselves, to connect with our past lives, to connect with our Akashic records, our records of everything that's ever happened to us throughout all time, past, future, parallel. It's all there within the Akashic record. But to really get there, we have to know how to bring ourselves into these different states of awareness. And we're gonna talk about that just a little bit. So just kind of the agenda for today, I like to stay organized in these processes so we can get all the information that we need to get through in this hour. There's a lot of information here and it will all be provided to you in an email after this webinar. So you don't have to take notes or anything like that, but we do have some very important information we wanna share with you that we think will be valuable for you. So the first thing that we do is we talk about some tools that we can use for accessing different trance states, how we can cultivate our astral boundaries so that we can work in these trance states safely, warmly, lovingly, compassionately, you know, moving through any fear that there might be because fear happens and we have ways to address that. And then we'll move into a guided journey. I'll use my voice to guide you through a process of exploring these different trans states and what to do there, how to be safe in that space, how to cultivate our energy a little bit so that we can do all of these things so we can experience life in a more grounded, centered way. And then we'll spend some time talking about the experiences and if there's any questions or any thoughts that you would like to share about your experience, you're welcome to do so. So, trance states. Why do we care about trance states? Trance states are essentially altered states of mind, altered states of awareness. We go into these different states of awareness very frequently, all the time right? Whenever we're relaxing, whenever we're meditating, whenever we're sleeping or we're dreaming, whatever we're doing, we are moving into different states of awareness all the time. Most of the people who are really drawn to this work are people who tend to kind of move between states of awareness, astral states of awareness, as we like to call them, very easily, but they may not be able to really make sense. Of their experience. So in order to really make sense of these experiences, we've developed some very specific, very practical tools that allow us to understand these different trans states as well as move between them. And we do this because we want to engage 
with our subconscious mind because we want to heal. We want to expand. We want to become empowered. We want to know ourselves. We want to see ourselves and we want to be able to more effectively engage the universe, engage the people around us, engage the world, right? Because there's so much experience out there. And the more that we begin to attune, to tune in to these different states of awareness, the more that we will be able to really enjoy our experience and thrive, right? We want to thrive. We want to get outside of our survival mechanisms into thriving mechanisms. And that's what we can do when we begin to explore these trance states. So, thanks again for being present with us. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the different trance states that we can reach. And these can be understood in the context of different brainwave patterns that can be measured within the brain using the EEG. These are different wavelengths, different energy patterns that exist at all times. We have all of these different brainwave patterns functioning at all the time to different extents, different levels. The amount of a given brainwave pattern that we have running through our mind at any given time is going to depend on how relaxed or how agitated or what we're focusing on, what we're thinking about, what we're doing. So let's go through these different brainwave patterns a little bit and talk about how we normally connect with them and what they different what the different states do for us. So a beta state is where you are normally. Right now, you're more or less in a beta state. You're awake, you're alert, you may be a little bit agitated, you're engaged with your outside world. Sometimes when we're experiencing a lot of fear, we're in an enhanced beta state because we need fear, right, in order to survive sometimes. Fear is what keeps us from being eaten by the tiger, so to speak. We need that energy sometimes, and most of us can cultivate these beta states very easily. Now, people that have a difficult time staying grounded, that have a difficult time making appointments and keeping schedules, they may actually need some help bringing in more beta wave activity into their brains, but we don't focus a whole lot on trying to induce beta states in Akashic trance work. Primarily in our work, we focus on alpha and theta states and delta states to some extent, and then we may discuss gamma states a little bit. Alpha states are very powerful things. Whenever you're sort of daydreaming, whenever you're sort of spacing out, if you're lightly meditating, just kind of relaxing, you're entering into a powerful alpha state. Alpha states are what happen when people use hallucinogens like ayahuasca or LSD or psilocybin. Alpha awareness becomes activated. We love alpha trance states because we can engage with people while we're in them. We can very easily connect with people in these alpha states, but we can also engage with our inner space, which we like to call our astral space. And just a quick aside about astral space and what we mean when we say that. A lot of times when people talk about astral space or astral experiences, what they are really talking about is a sort of out of body experience of projection. Like they're projecting their awareness. They're projecting their light body. We sometimes talk about to a different dimension or maybe just to a different place and the third dimensional awareness. But when we talk about astral space, we're talking about everything inside of ourselves talking about our personal fourth dimensional awareness, everything that is emotional, everything that is pure thought, everything that is memory, all of your associations, all of your sensations that happen within yourselves, all of those things that can't really very easily be predicted or controlled using physical laws. If we contrast that with physical space, then we are talking about predictable things. If I have a ball in my hand and I drop it in physical space, it's going to fall every time. That's the laws of physics in play. If I have an astral ball, if I have an imaginary ball and I drop it, maybe it won't fall. Maybe it'll turn into a bird. Maybe it'll just dissolve, right? Because it's within my mind. 
that doesn't mean it's not real. In Akashic trance work, we understand that everything that's happening inside of us is real. There's a reality there that is important for us to understand. So in these alpha states, we can cultivate our imagination, our capacity to daydream, to imagine, to create within our minds intentionally. Those states of mind, those alpha states tend to be criticized in our society as being non-focused, as just being sort of spacey or daydreamy. Those are not things that are encouraged in our culture, but those are actually very valuable states of mind, especially for those of us who understand how much we really do create our reality through the projection of our thoughts. Our experience is very much determined by the quality of our thoughts. So in these alpha states, as we begin to kind of introspect and look within, we can do a lot of very powerful work. In Akashic trance work, we developed a lot of specific tools, visualization, thought programs, exercises, things like that, that allow us to really cultivate those powerful alpha states. But alpha states are not always where we can do the deepest work. And in trance work in general, the sort of sweet spot of trance work is the theta state. The theta state is where you go when you're dreaming. Whenever you're dreaming, you're in a theta state. You're fully engaged with your inner world. You're fully engaged with your symbolic dream language. And when you do that, you can really completely directly interface with your subconscious, with your spirit with your dreams it's all really the same thing it's communication from that deeper self from that deeper understanding data states are amazing to experience and when you can induce them from a waking state when you can bring yourself down from alpha into a theta state consciously you can explore that inner world you can go on a journey so to speak Shamans use this practice, hypnotherapists use this practice, good friends use this practice. If you can relax someone well enough to really engage with them on a visual, imaginative level, disconnecting ourselves from our physical awareness, from our need to worry about our physical bodies, then we can really free ourselves. And that's where the true astral experience happens because that's when we can really let our bodies relax like we do when we're sleeping. In a deep theta state, somebody could come along and pick up your arm and you could drop it. The difference between an induced theta state and a natural theta state, which is what you would get to when you're dreaming, and typically you would go into a delta state first, which is that complete state of sleep, and then once your body gets some rest, you would move into a theta state and begin having some detailed dreams. In trance work practice, you can go into that theta state from an alpha state without having to go into a delta state first. The beauty of that is it allows you to communicate with a guide or an asker, someone who's present with you from that theta state. You can also program yourself to speak and record yourself while you're in that theta state and you can bring yourself out back into an alpha state without falling asleep and that's really what we want to do because we want to remember these states we want to go into that theta state experience what we experience and come back to an alpha or beta state so that we can think about, so we can talk about, so we can relay, so we can record our experiences. When we talk about reading the Akashic Records, we're really talking about going into our deeper self and getting information and making it conscious, writing it out, talking about it, describing it, recording ourselves. And that's really what we're doing. We're retrieving records from our deeper consciousness, from our deeper subconscious, from our spirit realm, from our dream world, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is to you. We don't expect you to believe anything. It's just really about experiencing yourself and that's really what we want to show you how to do is how to experience yourself on these different levels we also sometimes talk about these gamma states gamma states are not things that you can necessarily induce in yourself and others but you can experience them through relaxation through meditation through continual practice of clearing out those things that are kind of holding you down 
from clearing out your cellular memory. We talk about cellular memory sometimes, our bodies not being clear. When we begin to clear ourselves, we can really begin to experience gamma awareness, which we sometimes like to call heart-centered awareness. I talk about heart-centered awareness a lot because that is the center, right? Grounding is very important. When we are very grounded, when we can really activate those beta waves, when we can really connect with that lower survival self in a loving, compassionate way, then that's great. But we also want to have balance between that lower self and the higher self right? The creative, divine, articulate, imaginative capacities that we all have. And we center those things. We balance those things here in the heart center. And when we can do that, when we can fully sink into that heart center, then we know we have fully cultivated our different states of awareness because we're fully present and we can activate any level of awareness, any of our senses that we want to activate this understanding of these different trance states is profound, but it's also limited because it goes much further than this, much further than we even have language to really even talk about. You know, in Western science, they talk about the five senses. We might generally sometimes talk about a sixth sense, kind of a vague, intuitive, psychic ability that we might have. But in reality, we have an entire array, a vast number of senses that we can activate. The Egyptians taught us that we have 360 senses. So if you can imagine that, think about that for a second. 360 senses, so many levels of awareness that either we haven't accessed or we have accessed and we don't know how to make sense of, we don't know how to articulate these things. It's sort of like walking around with your eyes closed or with your hands over your ears and not even knowing it, not even understanding what's happening. So what do we do in these different states of awareness? How do we activate our different states of awareness? Well, it's not that hard. <laughs> it really isn't that hard. You do it all the time. You go into alpha states and theta states all the time. We are going to show you today a couple of very simple techniques that you can use anytime any place to bring yourself into these different theta states and alpha states so that you can explore yourself so that you can relax beyond being tools for exploring. They're also very good for relaxation. If you experience a lot of anxiety, if you experience any difficulty relaxing, if you have difficulty sleeping, these techniques can be very useful for that. And they're very simple, easy to remember. And again, after this webinar, you'll get an email that has all this information summarized. So you don't have to remember it for now, but it's pretty simple. So we talked a little bit about alpha trance and what it's good for, right? It gets us into that astral space, into that inner space. And we get there when we're in that restful, meditative sort of daydreamy space. How do we get there? It's really simple. There's two different methods that we've cultivated for managing, for getting ourselves into these alpha states. The first way that we bring ourselves into alpha trance is with simple breath work. If you've done any kind of meditation, if you've done any kind of yogic breathing, if you've done martial arts, if you've done anything like that ever in your life, then you understand that breathing is very central to managing our states of awareness, our moods, our feelings. The four to five count breath, sometimes for some people up to seven counts, is the key to getting into an alpha state. A slightly deeper breath than what you would normally do throughout your day. The faster you breathe, the more beta waves that you are producing in your mind. When you want to bring yourself into a beta state, you can just kind of breathe in a quick controlled manner. Sometimes they call this breath of fire in yoga practice where you breathe very quickly, but we don't really want to do that. We want to get ourselves into alpha and theta states so that we can explore our deeper awareness. So four to seven, for most people it's five counts on the inhale and four to seven counts on the exhale. 
Some people find they actually like to hold between the inhale and the exhale. If you want to do that, I recommend putting your tongue on the roof of your mouth and that will kind of help to align your body so that you can breathe as clearly as possible. But really just work with your own body. See what brings you into that daydreaming state without bringing you too deep. We don't wanna go into the theta or delta place yet with the alpha breath. We just want to kind of relax ourselves a little bit, bring ourselves into that engagement with our inner space, with our astral space, with our fourth dimensional awareness, and that's all. So I invite you, if you're in a comfortable place, to sit back and try some of this alpha breath with me. And I'll count, and we'll do this for about 30 seconds. So I'd recommend sitting back and taking a breath in for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five, in. One, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five, in, one, two, three, four, five, out, one, two, three, four, five. And you should immediately be able to feel yourself relaxing a little bit, feeling some of your thoughts and feelings kind of coming in and depending on what your inner space is like this may be a very pleasant relaxing experience or you may start to feel and experience some things that aren't comfortable and that's normal too it really depends where you are but you're just using your breath to tune into yourself a little bit to listen to yourself to connect with yourself and you can do this anytime you don't have to be sitting in a certain way. You can do this at work. You can do this while walking. You can do it while driving a little bit, <laughs> not too much. But if you need to relax yourself at any given time, it's very effective. And you don't want to go deeper than seven seconds in most cases because that will get you to a more relaxed place. So breath is a very effective tool that we can use to bring ourselves to any of these states. But sometimes the breath isn't enough, right? If we're feeling kind of agitated, if our thoughts are too busy, for some of us paying attention to the breath, counting the breath is not a pleasant experience and it's perfectly fine. We have many ways we can get down to these states. There's no limitations at all. The other method that we've come across that we really enjoy is toning. Toning is using the voice to vibrate into different parts of the body. It's very simple. It's like humming or singing, but it's not performing. We're not trying to sound good. It doesn't matter if we sound good. All that matters is that we're vibrating our voice into that part of our body. We've discovered that by vibrating our voice into different parts of our body, we can actually move our awareness, our state of consciousness between these different trance states. It's very effective, it's very easy, it's fun, feels good. And if you can just allow yourself to fully sink into that place, to fully relax into that place of just feeling the vibration, then you can get yourself into a trance state very quickly and very easily. So in order to bring ourselves into alpha states, we recommend toning or basically humming into the head, neck, throat area, really the face is where we want to feel vibration. And that activates the third eye. It activates all of our higher self-awareness and it's very relaxing and we can do this again anytime. You probably already have done this at some point in your life and maybe you didn't realize how much you were activating yourself, but I'll demonstrate now if you wanna do this with me. You're welcome to. You may not be able to hear me. The, the uh, mic may not pick up the sound I'm making, but it doesn't really matter what it sounds like. It's just about feeling the vibration. So I'm going to take a really deep breath in into my stomach. Mm. 
It's very relaxing. You should be able to feel kind of some vibration in your cheekbones and your brain and your face. It's very soothing. And it's very similar to mantra or chanting if you've ever attuned to the different chakra points. It's very similar to that, but it's simpler. It doesn't have to be any specific note or any specific syllable, although you can, if you want to, you can play with that and find some mantras that you enjoy. But ultimately it's just about the vibration, about the sound. So I'm gonna do it again. That's all there is to it. If you do that a few times, you'll find yourself relaxing very deeply and bring yourself very easily into that inner space, into that astral space. So that is the alpha breath. So we talked a little bit about theta trance as well and why it's so powerful. Theta trance is, again, kind of the sweet spot because that's where you can really access that deep Akashic wisdom where we can really begin to explore our past lives, connect with our ancestors, connect with our star family. Some people really relate with that. Connect with our spirit guides, connect with people that have passed. There's so much that can happen in those deep theta places. And you don't have to go into a theta state to do those things, but if you can, you can really access some deep levels of awareness that most people don't typically get to do in their lifetimes. So we go into these places all the time to these theta transits, but we, again, have developed some tools and methods for getting ourselves there, for inducing theta states very, very simply. So the theta breath is seven to 10 seconds. For most people, it's going to be right around eight or nine seconds. It really depends on your lung capacity and how comfortable you are with breathing exercises. I wouldn't go beyond 10 seconds. When you do that, you're going to bring yourself down into a delta state. And delta states are fine. They're very peaceful, very relaxing. And there are some entrainment and healing things that happen in those delta states. But we want to have an engaged experience. We want to connect with our subconscious, with our spirit realm, with our dream world. And we want to bring something back. We want to retrieve Akashic knowledge. We want to connect with ourselves at a deep level. So in order to bring ourselves into that theta place, we can just do again, a seven to nine, possibly 10 count, in and out. Again, if you wanted to hold between the inhalation and exhalation, you could do that. And that again, if you wanna do that, I would recommend putting the tongue on the roof of the mouth and that will kind of align you and make holding the breath more comfortable. But really seven on the inhale and seven on the exhale will get you down to a theta place pretty quickly. So if you want to try that with me, we'll just do it a few times because we don't want to get into a theta place. If we're engaged, you know, we might just kind of fall asleep, but we want to be able to touch into that state to bring ourselves deeper for a moment and then we can work on getting ourselves back out into an alpha or to a beta state easily without having to go down to a complete sleep state so let's give it a try i recommend sitting back and relaxing a little bit and just doing seven counts on the inhale and seven counts on the exhale so in one two three four five, six, seven, and out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can immediately begin to feel yourself if you do this breath to engage more with your inner self. More thoughts and feelings arise. You might have some memories or some daydreams kind of coming up, visual things. 
when we start to go into a really deep state of play, sometimes the things that arise don't really seem to make sense. And that's kind of good. We want to engage with some of that inner deeper symbolism. Everything that you see in these theta states is symbolic. And just like in a dream, if we take some time to understand and interpret those things, we can learn a lot about ourselves. We can heal ourselves and we can go into that expansion. We can explore our different Akashic records very easily. So again, breath work is not for everyone. Not everyone wants to be able to or wants to have to breathe or maybe it doesn't work for them. So toning into a theta state is probably one of my personal favorite things to do in life. Feels very good, it's very relaxing. And apart from bringing us to these theta states, it can help us to relax very deeply from any state of awareness very quickly. So the key to toning into a theta state is going into that place, vibrating into that place between the solar plexus and the heart. So all I have to really do is just kind of hum down into that place, vibrate down into that place. You wanna try that with me now or try it later, I recommend just sitting back and relaxing a little bit, opening your chest and taking a deep breath in. You should be able to feel the vibration in your chest and your hands and your arms. And it's very relaxing. It's very soothing. If you think about some of the more primal ways that we relax ourselves and that we as humans relax one another, how does a mother soothe a child? Through humming, right? Through the vibration. It's very primal. It's very, very conditioned as humans to relax with that tonal vibration. So if we can do that, if we can relax ourselves down to that theta place using the breath, we can get there very quickly. It's much faster to tone ourselves into a theta state than to have someone else induce them or to listen to something else. Although we do some of those things as well, and sometimes we need that. But if you can master breathing or toning yourself down into a theta state, you can get there very quickly, usually within minutes and you can do a lot of very deep work that would take much more time using more traditional trance induction techniques. So the different trance states for exploring awareness, it's a very powerful experience. But what do we do when we get there? What do we do in those spaces? Because more often than not, once we start looking within, once we start exploring ourselves, we are kind of overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff happening there. There's memories, there's emotions, there's thoughts, there's physical sensations, there's an entire universe of experience going on within us. And it can be overwhelming sometimes to the point that we just want to kind of kick back into a beta state and maybe watch some TV or something. And you know, that's fine sometimes. But if we want to really explore these spaces, it's helpful to create spaces. It's helpful to create a boundary within myself in the same way that in my physical experience I might have a house a place where I can go that's familiar to me where everything is that I need is there all of my needs are met there I have space where I can be alone where I can take care of myself where I can nourish and nurture myself and I only invite in the people that I feel safe and comfortable with and if anyone comes in that I don't feel safe and comfortable with, I can ask them to leave. The astral boundary is the same thing on a psychic level. And if you can cultivate an astral boundary, if you can cultivate an inner safe space, as we sometimes call it, then we can really, really explore these different trance states from a relaxed, calm, centered space. And when we do that, there's no challenges that are too much for us to face because we can always come back to that boundary. We can always come back to that inner safe space. The other aspect of astral boundaries is cultivation and direction of our energy. You know, in physical 3D space, 
you may have an experience where you ask someone to leave your house or where you decide that you don't want to engage with someone anymore, where someone is taking up too much of your time and energy. And hopefully you have the ability in your life if someone is treating you in such a way, you can ask them to step outside of your home, step outside of your space to not contact you anymore. But the reality is, if you are thinking about another person or a situation or a memory or anything at all, maybe it's just something that's going on in the world, maybe it's a problem that you have, whatever that might be, that energy is within your astral boundary. It's in your house. It's in your space. You are feeding it. You are feeding it your time. And time is all you have. Astral boundaries are made out of time. How much time do you spend working on yourself? How much time do you spend caring about yourself? Versus how much time do you spend worrying about other people, worrying about work, worrying about money, worrying about the future, ruminating on the past? We all spend a lot of time on these things. And sometimes these things need our attention. Oftentimes, we martyr ourselves, especially as sensitive, loving, and empathic people, and feel like we have to pour all of our energy, all of our time out for other people, be it a partner, be it a child, be it a friend, or maybe we don't have that. Maybe we just spend time thinking about how things haven't gone right for us, or how a problem might be manifesting over and over again in our lives. There's so many different things that we tend to focus our thoughts on. The practice of creating intentional astral spaces, creating the astral safe space is to build a place in your mind where you don't have to focus on those things. You don't have to always be focused on all the things around us, all the conditions, all the things we can't really control. We can't control the actions of other people. We can't control the state of the world. But what we can control is how we direct our energy, how we direct our time, how we direct our emotions. There are certain thoughts and feelings that arise within us spontaneously. They come up. They're there for a while. Some of them may stay. Some may kind of just float away. And then we have the ability also to respond to those thoughts. We can respond to those thoughts using our intentional ability to create. I can intentionally think something. I can intentionally imagine something. I can intentionally visualize or remember something. I can query myself. I can look for information within myself. And when I can do this, I can very easily create intentional astral spaces simply by imagining and visualizing them. The power of the imagination is very, very much misunderstood, undervalued, dismissed in our culture. But the imagination is everything. Every object that you see, every artifact, every human-made object around you was at one point in someone's imagination. But more than that, as we imagine, we are programming ourselves, we're entraining ourselves, we're conditioning ourselves. We're all very much subject to the conditions of life around us, right? And those conditions tend to be reinforced over and over again. Through this practice of creating an intentional astral space, we can begin to recondition ourselves. We can recondition ourselves away from those old stories, those old traumatic memories that we may be holding on to, and we begin to focus, to refocus, to reframe our experience because we are cultivating loving feelings. We're cultivating beauty and joy. I have this picture here because one of the most popular astral safe spaces that people create is the beach. The beach has a lot of power, a lot of meaning to people, right? And we can really easily bring in our full experience of being there. We can think about the smells. We can think about 
our memories of being at the beach. We can daydream about it. We can fantasize about it. We can remember the sounds of seagulls and the sounds of waves. It's very easy for a lot of us, unless we've never been to a beach, to go there, to imagine that place. And what happens when we begin to imagine this beach is we begin to associate. Our mind picks up on the associations that we have with the idea of the beach and any joyful feelings, any happy feelings, any relaxed feelings that we might have in association with the beach will be activated within our hearts. When we activate our positive associations, our positive cellular memory of these joyful experiences or these daydreams or these fantasies, whatever it might be, we are reconditioning ourselves. We're rewiring ourselves towards happiness and we're creating a safe place where we can explore even deeper. We want to always have this place to come back to. If it's not a beach, it can be something else. It doesn't have to be like a physical, literal place. It can be a totally abstract, imaginary place. Some people have cartoon worlds or just floating in water, floating in space. It doesn't have to be this literal visual space. And it can be different every time that you use it. But the point is, having a place, an astral space, an inner space where we can go to really feel relaxed. And once we're there, we want to bring in everything. We want to feed our heart. What we're really doing is we're activating our heart-centered awareness, our place of love and compassion, of joy. So we want to, as we cultivate this space, really build it, bring in the things that make us happy, bring in the things that fill us full of joy. Now, if this doesn't work, and it doesn't work for everyone, if we're doing a lot of soul searching, if we're suffering a lot, if we have a lot of issues with this experience, then Sorry. If we're having trouble exploring, bringing in joy, then it's important to listen to that experience too. It's information being fed to us through the subconscious, through our dream experiences. So as you try to work in the space, you try to feed it, if you feel challenged, if you feel blocked, if things that you don't like are coming up, it's an opportunity to create some boundaries. And we're actually gonna go through that here. We're gonna go through a guided session here in a few minutes that will show you how you can specifically create boundaries within your safe space, within yourself, within your heart, to just dedicate some space to yourself. Because what we really wanna do is be happy, right? We wanna find joy, we wanna laugh. We wanna be able to thrive and experience life in all its fullness. Life isn't always gonna be happy. It's not always gonna be joyful. It's not always going to be fun, but we can find moments of peace within ourselves. We can find moments of joy. And if we're already there, if you are already living a joyful life, then great. You've already created a place, a foundation where you can explore, where you can expand, where you can experience life at a deeper level. But if you have any challenges at all, this practice of cultivating your safe space can be highly effective for just bringing in more joy, more happiness, and healing. We want to focus on our hearts so that we can heal anything that we're carrying there. And that's really important too. Finding healing, finding love for ourselves, finding joy for ourselves, cultivating joy, cultivating love cultivating happiness. These things aren't necessarily automatic in life. Ideally, they would be. But in reality, just like if we wanted to have a garden in our backyard where we grow the vegetables that nourish us, we need to plant seeds. We need to bring things in. We need to water. We need to pay attention to that part of ourselves. And we can't. No matter what our responsibilities might be, we have the right to do that. We have the right to cultivate happiness and joy, no matter how much shame or guilt or fear that we might be carrying with us. We still are allowed to enjoy life, no matter what. 
And I truly believe that. I hope you do too. So yes, cultivate your energy. Spend some time with yourself. Give yourself some attention. Give yourself some affection, self-care. And the beauty of this safe space, of this astral safe space, no one can ever take it away from you. You're always just there with yourself. You're always there with yourself. You always will be there for yourself. And even if someone takes away all of your comfortable external situations, even if you don't have a place where you can be safe and comfortable and secure because someone has taken that from you, you can still go here to this space. You can still spend time with yourself. You can still do this. You don't need to have any external situation in order to cultivate your safe space, to cultivate astral boundaries. And that's the beauty of it. People can take our house, but they can't take our heart. So thank you for listening to me talk about these things. I did want to take you through a guided experience. If you're interested, we'll at least give you an idea, even if you're not in a place where you can fully relax, it'll give you an idea of the sort of visualizations that you can do in order to experience boundaries in different trance states. So I recommend now just finding a kind of relaxed position sitting back, finding a place where you can just breathe and let the air enter your lungs. Sitting back. It's okay if you can't see me. You should be able to hear me if you can though. It's good to be in a place where you can hear me. I'm just gonna take some nice breaths now for a five count. Breathing in for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five, just continue to breathe, and as you breathe and relax, find your thoughts and feelings arising naturally, with the breath. Just observe the thoughts and feelings. Just watch them float by. There's nowhere to go. Nothing to do. It's time to just relax. It's time to just find a point of peace. Just fully and deeply relaxing. And as you relax a little bit deeper, 
I'm doing a seven count of the breath now. Breathing in for seven and out for seven. In one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just continue to breathe and relax. And as you do this, you begin to imagine a safe, happy place. A place from your memories or daydreams. A place you've been before, a place you'd like to be, any place. It can be as realistic or abstract as you choose. Just take your time to fully engage this place, with your thoughts and feelings. What do you like to do there? What are the sounds you hear? What smells? What texture? How does this place make you feel? Rest back into this place for a moment. And bring in all of the things that bring you joy. Things you like to do. People you love if you wish. Old memories, old daydreams. Only the things that bring you joy. Only the things that bring you happiness. And as you do this, you may find resistance. There may be something that stays with you, something persistent, something uncomfortable. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a responsibility, a worry, a fear, a memory. It's okay if it's there. You can receive it with love and gratitude because you now have an opportunity to create an astral boundary. It's time to choose now. How much time do you want to give this thing which distracts you, this thing which you always seem to think about? How many hours a day do you give to this energy? Is it necessary to give all of this time away? 
Does it benefit you? Does it benefit anyone? Can you set aside some time for yourself to cultivate yourself and your own energy? Even one minute a day will enable you to pour in to yourself, to cultivate yourself. How much time can you give yourself? Even if you have a lot of responsibilities, obligations, pressure, there's nothing you need to give all of your time to. Nothing you need to give all of your energy to. Just allow yourself Create a boundary of time. How much time do you need to spend on those things? Just think about this for a moment. And when you're ready, I invite you to bring your awareness back to your physical space, to your physical environment. Just thinking a little bit about your experience. And we invite you to share about your experience if you're interested. Let us know if the toning or breath techniques worked for you, how they worked for you. If you want to tell us about your safe space, if that exercise worked for you too. We invite you to engage with us a little bit. If you don't feel comfortable doing this here, you can reach out to us and connect with us over email or on Facebook. We love hearing about the different experiences people have as they engage with their astral spaces. And there's no obligation, of course. I did want to ask you if you could let us know what email you signed up for this webinar under so that we can make sure that you get all this information of your follow-up email. It's okay if not to, if it's not convenient for you to provide that right now, it's not a problem at all. Reach out to us anytime. I just want to make sure you get the information. There's also a recording that will be coming to you too if you want to sign up for that. Just let us know. You can reach out anyway. You can email us and get that information. So thank you for joining us for today's session. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, if you'd like to learn how to go more in depth with any of these practices, we invite you to check out the e-course that we offer, uh, kashiktrance.com slash initiation. If you wanna just know more about what we do, follow us on Facebook. If you're not already there, facebook.com slash akashiktransework. And you can reach out to us anytime, contact at alchemicalchild.com. Thanks again. 
deepest blessings. Reach out anytime. Till next time.